Good morning, class. This is your instructor, George Love. This is for 23:44 CNC programming. I've got some examples on the paper ahead of me. We said we would go through this after class. We obviously had some problems with I and J. Uh, this is just an attempt to explain the IJ concept to you. In all of these, we've assumed a uh, a uniform radius, either two or three. And then all of these points, we also assume that they're directly on the line, no matter uh, what kind of a crappy drawing I did. So let's start off with point one. We're in a, a straight line linear mode. We're assuming we came into this uh, from a linear mode. So we're starting off in G1. Point one is at minus uh, seven in X, minus five in Y. We move straight in a, in a linear fashion to point two. I don't need the G1. Remember, it's modal. It goes in the bucket and never comes back out again. So we end up at point two. X is still minus seven, but Y has changed to a positive five. Now we come to the curve. Here's a clockwise curve. Clockwise, as we know, is G2. So I'm going to put the end of the arc and the origin of the arc as referenced uh, from point two here. Basically what we're saying is the machine control needs the start of the arc, the end of the arc, and the origin to do the math for you. What we're giving it in point two is the start of the arc. In point three, we're giving it the end of the arc, and then according to the Haas conventional programming, we're also giving it the origin of the arc as compared to the start of the arc. So point two, start of the arc. Point three, the end of the arc. I and J in every case is the distance in the, the distance from the start of the arc to the center of the arc. <clears throat> in this case, the start of the arc is point two, minus seven, positive five. And then you just count over one, two. So it's a two inch radius, or two, two measurement radius, whatever that is. So there's a change in X of a positive two. There is no change in Y from the start of the arc to the center of the arc. So the, uh, the nomenclature would be I, positive two, one, two, J, which always references the, the Y. There is no change in J, so we, I, Y, so we put J as zero. And then from then, uh, I've just continued these on every time. So then it moves, does it, you, again, after you do a rotational move, you must convert back to a linear move. Uh, it is a modal command. You must do the bucket every time. So from three to four, it's just a positive uh, straight move in X, no change in Y. Here is a different example from a different Cartesian coordinate. <clears throat> We're starting at point one. Point two is the start of the arc. Three is the end of the arc. And four is another linear move. Again, we're starting off in a linear mode. X minus seven, Y a positive seven, point one. Point two is again the start of the arc. It's, it's again, we went there in a modal straight line modal command of a linear move, so I don't need to put that in again. X four, Y seven. That's the, again, that's the start of the arc. On the rotational line, you always must have an X, Y and an I, J. <clears throat> You, don't, you, you can put I or J as zero, but you must have them on the line. This, again, is a counterclockwise, or clockwise move, rather. So that's G2, and I've got a radius of three here. From the start of the arc at 4, 7, I end the arc at 7, 4. In the origin of the arc, from X, there is no change. So my I is a zero. In J, from the start of the arc to the center of the arc, it goes down three points, so a minus three. So again, start of the arc, end of the arc, distance from the start of the arc to the center of the arc, called out in I and J. And then from three to four, we just do another linear move, um, X uh, positive seven, Y minus eight. So again, when, when we start, every, every, every arc is defined by the start of the arc and the end of the arc and the center of the arc. And that's really all the information that you need for these. In every instance, I'm taking the difference in X and Y, and I'm plugging it into the I and the J. In this example, we're in quadrant three, uh, four, rather. So um, every, all, my, all my number signs can get to change around on you. I'm just trying to give you a bunch of different examples. Again, uh, a radius of three on these, and we're assuming that all of these are at Cartesian uh, coordinate points. Um, G1, starting off in a linear move. Point one is at x5, y6. Straight line move down to um, x5.0, uh, y minus 5. <clears throat> so that's the start of my arc at point two. 
gives my start of the arc. G2, clockwise move around, and there's the end of my arc, X 2.0, Y minus 8. The change in the start of my arc to the center of my arc in X is a minus 3, 1, 2, 3, so we plug that into I. There is no change in, in Y, so we leave J as a 0. The end of my arc, again, is at um, from point 3 to point 4 is a straight line linear move, just changes in X all the way back to uh, minus 9 in X. One last example. <clears throat> this goes from um, uh, quadrant 2 to quadrant 3 and finishes up in quadrant 4 just so you can see the signs change. So point 1, G1, linear move, straight to 2, X minus 7, Y 5.0. Straight line linear move to point 2, x minus 7, y minus 4. That's the start of my arc. G3, this is a counterclockwise move. So G3 shows the end of my arc and the distance um, from the start of the arc to the origin. The end of my arc is at minus 4, minus 7. From the start of my arc to the center, I'm going uh, a positive 3 and x, so 1, 2, 3. So I put a positive 3 here. There is no change in y, so j is 0. And then I end again. When I go out of a, of a rotational move, I must end uh, in a linear move. Uh, I must change my sign back to uh, a linear move again. So x positive 10, y minus 7. I'm going to put this up in Moodle. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, um, uh, you can review this as, at your leisure. But uh, this gives you multiple examples, uh, quadrant 3. Uh, quadrant 4, uh, quadrant 1, and quadrant 2 uh, with a bunch of different sign changes. I do hope you understand the main, the main purpose of this is so that you understand start of the arc, end of the arc, distance from the start to the center of the arc uh, determines your I and J. If you have any questions, uh, please get with me. We'll review this in class. If you'd like, I'll go through it with the whole group. Thanks.